Have you ever been disappointed and frustrated with the service in a bank? Have you felt clueless about what possible remedies you have in law and where exactly to file a complaint? Well, addressing these exact concerns, the Supreme Court has recently passed a crucial ruling stating that any person who avails of any service from a bank will fall under the purview of the definition of a consumer within the meaning of the Consumer Protection Act 1986, which essentially means that now, if you're dissatisfied with the services provided by a bank, then you can file a consumer complaint and avail the remedies provided under the Consumer Protection Act 1986. A bench comprising Justices D.Y. Chandrachur and A.S. Bopana observed, and I quote, A person who avails of any service from a bank will fall under the purview of the definition of a consumer and it would be open to such a consumer to seek recourse to the remedies provided under the Consumer Protection Act. The bench also underscored that a consumer complaint filed in a dispute regarding the premature encashment of a joint fixed deposit by a bank in contravention of the terms and conditions is maintainable. So what was the case exactly before the Supreme Court? In this case, the complainant and his father had opened a joint fixed deposit in the HDFC bank. An amount of 75 lakhs had been deposited jointly in the name of the complainant and his father for a period of 145 days. Thereafter, the fixed deposit amount was credited to the account of the complainant's father on the request made by the father on 31st May 2016. In his complaint before the State Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission at Lucknow, the complainant contended that upon the maturity of the fixed deposit, both the complainant and his father had jointly issued a direction to the bank for renewing it for a period of 10 days and despite this, the amount was credited solely to the account of the father. The State Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission held that the dispute was primarily between the complainant and his father on the issue of the fixed deposit amount deposited and therefore only a civil court was competent to deal with such a dispute and that a consumer complaint was not maintainable. Consequently, an appeal was preferred before the National Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission that is the NCDRC which dismissed the appeal as withdrawn. Later, the complainant filed a review application before the NCDRC stating that he had not furnished instructions to his counsel to apply for the withdrawal of the appeal, but the same was however not entertained. In appeal, the Supreme Court noted that the relevant terms and conditions related to the joint fixed deposit stipulated that in case of premature encashment, all signatories to the deposit must sign the encashment instruction. The court also held that the essence of the consumer complaint was that there was a deficiency on the part of the bank in proceeding to credit the proceeds of a joint fixed deposit exclusively to the account of the complainant's father. Pertinently, the bench also observed that the State Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission ought to have determined whether the complaint related to deficiency of service fell under the purview of the Consumer Protection Act 1986 and that there was no ground for the Commission, that is the State Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission, to direct the complainant to pursue his claim before a civil court instead. The bench also took into consideration that during the proceedings before the State Consumer Dispute Redressal Commission, no claim was raised by the complainant against his father and thus the Commission was wrong in deducing that there was a dispute between the complainant and his father. The Supreme Court further recorded in the order and I quote, The respondent bank does not dispute that the appealant along with his father opened a joint FD with the bank. A person who avails of any service from a bank will fall under the purview of the definition of a consumer under the 1986 Act. As a consequence, it would be open to such a consumer to seek recourse to the remedies provided under the 1986 Act. The court therefore directed the NCDRC to dispose of the appeal on merits. Thank you. This is Aratrika Bhomik reporting for Live Law.
Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such updates.